welcome to the Mom Slowdown Podcast. Today, I have a real treat. Perry Schneider is an online dating expert, and she's here to help navigate all the do's and don'ts of modern dating. Welcome to the show, Perry. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk about dating, and I'm 40, so I'm not necessarily in the dating scene right now, but all my friends are getting divorced. So I'm in that stage of life where we're getting back on the scene and getting back out there and, you know, trying to support friends and and colleagues and family. So dating is, is near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter what age you are or what stage of life you are. The reason that the dating apps are so popular right now is because they're so great for meeting people and exploring an area of life that maybe you haven't before. So I love them. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you get to be an online dating expert? How does one fall into that category, you know, and how is your approach different? Yeah, I love that. So my approach is totally different because it's just from my own experience. I am based in New York City. And so it's one of those places where you're like constantly surrounded by people all the time, eligible bachelors all the time. But I just never really found a comfort in the dating scene you know, pre-dating apps. So I've been so, here. Yeah. Go ahead. Isn't it hard in New York with all the people to even find? I mean, you would think that it would be easier because you'd have such a big pool to choose from, but I imagine it's harder than if you had a smaller pool. Yeah, I totally think that. And I've tried it from every aspect, you know, I've been here for 12 years, which is kind of wild. And, you know, I've been on the dating scene in terms of just meeting people in real life. And that never worked out for me because I think you just go off of that vibe. Like you're at the bar, you meet someone and then you do go out for a date and you're like, whoa, what, what was I thinking? Like, I totally must've just been swayed by the music because then you meet the person out of that context. And it's just, you have no common interest. You have nothing that keeps you there. And it's so awkward. So, you know, I really got comfortable using the dating apps as a way to kind of suss someone out and really understand like what their interests were, what they were about before I gave them my time, which I always say, you know, you might think that you have time to give and, and, you know, put towards dating, but that doesn't mean that you should right? Your time is precious, your energy, all of the, you know, vibe to get ready, get out, get the subway, you know, all those things, like it really should be more sacred. And that's why using the apps as a tool is the best way to suss and see if someone is worth your time. I love it because time is such a limited commodity. I mean, it truly is. I think all of us are sitting here listening and being like, oh, if I only had a few more hours in the day, I could do da, 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 or X, Y, Z, or I would have time for myself or, or, you know, and I think with dating, it also comes with, well, if I, if I get this then I'll start dating, or if I lose 10 pounds, I'll, I'll start dating. Or if I find the time or, you know, I've got to land this account or do this next job. And it's also about, you know, putting yourself first. I mean, I think, you know, dating as a priority and being able to put the amount of time and energy and effort that you're saying that goes into preparing for a date, you know, that is sacred. That is valuable. Mm -hmm. Uh, How how do you cut through the chat? I don't even know what dating apps are out there right now. Like, how do you cut through the chatter? There's always something new back when I, this is how old I am. There was just, oh my gosh, what is the first dating app? And it was just like an ego boost. Was it match or Tinder yeah, or match? Oh yeah. I'm too, I'm even too old. For Harmony, it. you know, like it was like match and a pretty little profile. I mean, I think it was like 20 and it was terrible. You yeah, know, it was, so bad. <laughs> it was just an ego thing. Cause you could come in and be like, you have 400 emails. But yeah. that actually is totally a scam because what I'm finding with clients who feel like they need to be on a paid site like Match or eHarmony, you know, the algorithm, and I think there could be like a class action lawsuit, honestly, because it always tells you, it entices you, gets you, you know, hooked that like, oh, you think that you're popular on there. And the reality is total scam. You know, anybody you message on there hasn't been on there since like, you know, last year. And it's just, it's a mess and I don't like it. And so if you're, you know, curious to know what the best dating apps are, I would say it's Bumble, which is like the Sadie Hawkins of apps. Cause the women have to reach out and initiate the conversation. 
Okay. I like that. And then we have hinge, which I love because I find that their questions that they make you fill out on your profile are so great and just different. And they're not the typical, you know, kind of what is your hobby and what do you like to do on your weekends and things like that. So what's an example of a hinge question that you like? Yeah. So I love the, you know, questions that are like, what is your, you know, favorite thing to do with a date? Like, what does your first date look like? You know, describe your first date or things around the, you know, topic of how do you feel in this like current moment being on hinge, you know, and just questions that are a little bit more real and give you the chance to take it in any direction. You could be silly with it, or you could just be like, dating apps are weird. And I'm just looking for someone to like, go on a weekend trip with, like, do you like travel? Things like that, you know? It pushes you to be a little bit more authentic with their questions. And that's what I love is the authenticity that you can show on your profile with Hinge because they're not like the typical, you know, silly stuff. So those are your top two. What else is out there that you're like, stay away from? (laughs) I, so here's my thing is that everybody has a different preference, right? Like I love OkCupid because they're very inclusive. And I think that that's something that the dating apps really need to think about because not everybody fits inside a specific box, you know, or you might just be divorced and you are just curious, right? Like you're just curious what's out there, who's out there. And OkCupid does a really great job at being very inclusive about what your interests are and what your sexuality is. And they ask a lot of questions and you can put these different um, identifiers like on your profile, if you choose, that will say, you know, what you're looking for, casual relationship, they really get into it. So I would say, you know, there's really nothing to stay away from. It's just be discerning, right? Like use your common knowledge to know what is worth your time. And I think that that's the issue is that a lot of these dating apps really hook you in. They want you to waste your time and just know that like time does not equal success. It's the quality of your actions on the dating apps that will equal your success with the dating apps. I love that. I really do. Yeah. And it's it's so important, right? So you have this opportunity. And so our Bumble, Hinge, and OkCupid, are those all free? They are free. Yes. Okay. And I really don't believe that you should pay for an app unless like, you know, Match is one of those that- Is it still around? It is still around. Okay. Look in. It is really like- People like it, but I just find like seven times out of 10 that the people who they populate for you are not active users. Where- OkCupid, Bumble and Hinge, even Tinder, although like it can get a little dicey on Tinder. So is Tinder still like the hookup site? Is that what that's still about? Okay. So let's, okay. Like there are success stories on Tinder. If you can Mm -hmm. believe it, like there are people who have met their husbands and wives on Tinder. It's wild, you know, but I just do not think that you need to pay for any feature on these dating apps. This should be totally free. And I truly do not see the correlation between paying for like the upgrade and you getting to be more successful on the app. If any- or getting a better quality match or, or any of those things, right? Because yeah. everything's so individualized just because you paid what at $14.99 a month or whatever it is, doesn't no, totally. give you a new platform. The algorithm with these apps favors active users. So active users over paid users, you know? So if you get on the dating app, as much as you might detest it, if you can get on the dating app minimum of 15 minutes a day, that will show the app that you're active and they will populate users for you on that basis. That seems like a lot of time to be on a dating app. And that's when you're just going through and checking out people. I, you know, this is an, uh, this is an untold scene. So I'm very interested from as a wallflower to see like what it's really like out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if someone comes to you for dating advice, what's your approach? How do you work with clients? Yeah. So I know I totally skipped over the the first question that you asked me is how I got into this. Mm -hmm. Um, I just got so excited. I use this myself. You know, I lived in New York city. I actually really hated going out with the intention of who is out there. And like, how can I like meet a man tonight? Because if I'm going out with my girlfriends or friends, I want to be focused on them. And you also do not want to be the chick who's like, eyes are, you know, purveying like the scene. Of- you're not living in the moment, right? Yeah. You don't get it. You're not fully present there or out. And it's garbage. It's, it makes you 
feel like you can't be present and you just can't be enjoying yourself. And so I hated that. I wanted to really just be with my friends. Or if I went out with a girlfriend and I was, you know, looking for men again, like I would meet these guys and then say the success happened and we met up for a drink and then I'd get there and be like, whoa, 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 we have nothing in common. So it was the alcohol veil and the very oh, dim lighting that happened. Veil, the, music, yeah. you know, the vibes, you know, like everything made that moment perfect. And then, you know, the next time you meet, it's like everything's gone and you're just yeah, like, the lights are on now. The yeah. lights are on. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. So I had a friend who was like, you should try out OkCupid was the first dating app. And I loved it because I was still like timid, but I could have conversations that built the confidence, gave me an idea of like how things go, what to expect, you know, what to open with, how to continue a conversation, not to just give a one word answer. So I really like fell into that. And I was on all the dating apps, <laughs> like binged them for six years. And then just, Ooh, that's a long time. I know. Well, you know, I had a lot of situationships, right? Okay. Like, I had a lot of little small success stories that gave me a lot of insight into what I wanted, what I didn't want, um, the standards that I needed to, you know, be like very clear on and that I didn't want a situationship. I wanted a relationship. So when I um, got into this mood, I deleted the apps and hired a life coach who truly gave me a 180. She pushed me to really think like, why aren't you having success? Because it's not that there aren't eligible men in your vicinity. Why are you feeling like you're in the desert when you're in New York city? And she just pushed me. And then I gave it a little bit of time. I re-downloaded the app and then, well, I went to Bumble because I'm, you know, just wanting to take the confident leap. Where do you think your personal growth happened? I mean, obviously that's what the life coach was doing is kind of pushing you out of your comfort zone and allowing you to grow. What do you think changed over that time than you? She just pushed me to ask the questions of like, well, why do you think, you know, you aren't matching with someone? And I was like, well, I'm just not finding a guy who is, six foot two and has an amazing job and loves the same music that I do and makes great money and like sushi for dinner every night. She was like, Perry, um, that's just not real. Yeah, and she, right. You know, her <laughs> that's the unicorn. Was, yeah. You know, she was like, you are looking for the unicorn. You are looking for someone to fit every single box and you should be picky. You should be demanding of what you want out of a partner. But if you're so picky and judgmental that you're not willing to accept someone for who they are, you are never going to meet someone where they're at. You're going to keep searching for the unicorn and that doesn't exist. Sure. You know, so the growth happened when she really said, are you being picky or are you being judgmental about someone? Are you like looking for the unicorn or are you looking for someone to unveil themselves, you know, in time. And like, are you accepting or are you being just so in your box and set in your ways? And I was like, oh, yep. Yep. I am. I yeah, am. Maybe it is me. Yeah, it is me, you know? <laughs> and so she just asked these little nugget questions. And then when I got back into the dating apps, I started to read people's profiles. <laughs> I was reading the guy's profiles, which I really wasn't doing before was kind of just using the photo to say yes or no. And then I really started to have more conversations. And if someone said, Hey, let's just go out on a date. I was like, Nope, that doesn't work for me. And I want conversation before. And so I started to just let those people fall away and not campaign for them because I thought they were handsome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it changed. And that's how I got really into a different approach. And then I met my boyfriend and I will say like previously, I probably wouldn't have given him time. I probably wouldn't have really like gone out with him because he was a little bit slower. He's introverted. I'm very extroverted. We're just a little different, but differences can be the uniting factor in a relationship. And then my girlfriends were like, how did you get successful on the app? Like how teach me your way. Like, so I was just teaching and telling and giving my girlfriend's guidance. And then I had a girlfriend say, you could make this a thing. Like you are such a good confidant. You are such a good objective person to give help on the dating apps. And I was like, okay, let me do it. Let me try. And it's been really fun because we all as humans want a confidant. We want someone yeah 
to give us support and guidance, but we also don't want them to weigh in too much. We don't want their judgment. You know? Right. Even like the life coach, I think is you set up that kind of path and give someone guidelines and then let them grow within that. And, you know, it's like the same thing you do as parenting, you know, you're kind of like the side of the swimming pool where they're going out, you know, they're out swimming in the dating pool and they can come back and check in, you know, with you and just give them that feedback and support. I imagine like, Hey, you know, this is working. This isn't working. You know, it's, it's such a scary thing, yet we all crave human connection. You know, we all want to find someone, I think for the most part, and, you know, it's such a valuable asset to have, you know, a supportive, loving relationship. It's so true, but it's also really amazing to know that whatever you're seeking, you can find it right? So for your ladies who are getting divorced, you know, they might not have been dating for the past, you know, dozen years and it's scary to them. So whatever they're seeking right now, if they are seeking something that's casual, that's kind and gentle, they can absolutely find that. You do not need to just like get into the flow of how dating is currently because that's the societal norm. You need to start with what do I want? And then know that you can absolutely find it. And that's the coolest thing is like, I mean, if you want to get cheeky and you want to date around, do it right. Like you can go out with that intention, or if you are looking for a relationship, you can find that too. Mm -hmm. So it is a really great tool. As long as you know what you want, you're discerning, you use your common sense, you know. Which I think is important. It's taking that, you know, pause. I mean, this podcast is mom slow down, right? For a reason. And taking that pause, even to just assess whether you're coming out of a divorce or you're getting back in the dating saying is what do I really want? And you can't do that without slowing down and kind of feeling the feels, right? And getting kind of intimate with yourself and and figuring out, do I want to just go out and have casual dating, you know, or or do I want, am I ready to look for something more serious? If so, what does that even look like? Yeah, exactly. And I actually highly recommend a twofold approach of either journaling and writing down, you know, just every thought that's in your mind. And if you are not comfortable with journaling, because I have a lot of clients who are like, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I say, go for a solo walk Mm -hmm. with no distraction. So no music, no podcast, no nothing. And just let your brain cycle through you know, your thoughts and peel the onion back and just think every facet through and say to yourself, when I return home, I'm done. Like I'm putting the, the mind pen down, you know, and give yourself the space to think things out, really get vulnerable with yourself. You're your safest space. So ask yourself the questions and really peel the onion back and get to the deep layer. And that really will give you just such a full view of where you're at. Honestly, that is so beautiful, Perry, because it's so true. You have to get, if you want someone to be comfortable with you, you have to get comfortable with you. And if you can't do either one of those two things, you know, sitting and journaling meditation, I mean, meditative walk is so great because you're in nature, you know, even if you're in the city, you know, you're, you're around trees and you can feel really grounded and and notice your feet hitting the pavement and notice what comes up. What emotions are you flooded with? Maybe, you know, what issues are you still needing to work through and really kind of evaluate where you are in that moment. Yeah. I love that. That's a great way to say it's a meditative walk, right? Mm -hmm. You're not distracted. I really like encourage people just to 15 minutes or 10 minutes, you know, just walk around the block with nothing. And that really does give you the space to slow down, to think things through and be vulnerable with yourself. Figure out what the hell is going on in this crazy, crazy monkey mind of yours, right? Just start to really dig into that. I think it's important. All right. So pre and post COVID, I think there's some positive things that came out of the dating scene. What, what do you think were the, the pros and versus cons of coming out of COVID? Right. One of the best pros is the playing field between men and women is incredibly leveled out. And I think that pre-COVID, it was a real casual style of dating. The dating apps were just to get hookups or it was not deep. It was very surface level. And that has changed so much because during the pandemic, we were isolated and lonely and sad and really deeply craved connection and a partner. And so both men and women are like, okay, I am ready to get deep with someone like the men who were isolated and looking at their buddies who were married or, you know, in relationships were like, oh, I want that now. Like, I don't want to just go on a casual (laughs) 
dating, you know, journey. It was a global forced pause for Mm -hmm. everyone. And so whether you needed to take that meditative walk, it was a global pause Mm -hmm. and everyone had to sit and get real comfy with their thoughts. Yeah. And it was scary, you know, and I think a lot of men who were just so used to even women, you know, I, I never say that it's like one-sided. I think that there are norms and standards that like we sadly fall into, but with the pandemic, you know, we did pause and we did take a really good look at our lives and where we're at. And is this what I really want? Do I want to be by myself? Like, no, I want a partner. I want to do life with someone. So the positive side is that everybody is in pursuit now of finding a connection. And I really see that overwhelmingly. There are of course, always going to be people who are not in that boat, but that's fine. You know, good for them. They can do what they want to do, but it seems like overwhelmingly for my clients, they're reporting, finding people who are on the same page as them wanting a relationship. I love that increasing the pool. And we realize like our time is valuable and life is really freaking short and it can change. You know, we really don't have control over it. And so I think a lot of people got really comfortable with their values or started setting, you know, some values and maybe they were playing around before. It's like, wait a minute, you know, this life thing is short. I mean, that's what it definitely you know, showed us. And, you know, these are the things I want, or maybe I am ready. And being lonely is not fun. It's not fun. Right. Yeah. And I think that there were a lot of people beforehand who were coasting, you know, in the dating scene and just saying, oh, I'm, you know, just enjoying myself because they were not willing to be vulnerable with their demons. (laughs) They weren't willing to take a look at what their faults were or where they were, you know, not really in alignment. And again, that forced pause really made them go, okay, I don't need just sex. I don't need just an intimate partner. I need a connection. I want someone who I can share life with and be in support of and and really in a give and a take. So it's really, I think it's a really kind of beneficial thing that happened for dating and connection. Yeah. I think the other piece that happened to you where in the life cycle that I'm in is if you didn't choose well you didn't have all the other distractions. So you you know, you weren't running the kids to soccer and baseball and dance lessons and going from this thing to that thing and juggling schedules. And you were forced to really sit with your partner and you either decided wow, I chose really well and I'm super grateful or hold the, and pump the brakes. And I, I mean, everyone knows someone who's going through a divorce right now, you know, they moved, they decided they didn't like their house. You know, they're going through a divorce and getting back out on the dating scene especially being, you know, out of it from, you know, 20 years, you know, 15 years, 10 years, what does that even look like? How do you get someone to start to feel comfortable on putting themselves out there that when they've come out of a, maybe a long-term marriage or relationship? Just start, you know, like you said before, you will always say, when I lose weight, I'll be ready. When I do this, I'll be ready. When I move to that new city, I'll be ready. And that is just not true because you are perfectly ready right now. And you will, what's that silly quote of like a year from now, you'll have wished that you started, you know, today. And so if you just start, I had a client who just uh, started with me and he actually downloaded the apps before we started. And he had started kind of getting a feel for it. He had nothing on his profile, which I was like, that's a little creepy. And like, don't really recommend that, but he had not been on the dating apps in seven years. And so he really was like creeping just to get an idea. And I loved that tenacity of just, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to just start. You got to just start. You got to just feel it out. Your experience is going to be specific to you. And it's scary, but you just have to say, I'm going to do it because my first priority is me, right? Like we never do that. So put yourself first, find a way that feels comfortable for you to just begin and get a feel for it. I think it's so true. And I mean, being vulnerable is scary, being open, especially if you've been in a relationship, you know, you get comfortable and, you know, in some kind of groove and then going out there can be really frightening, but I love that. Just putting one foot in front of the other and starting. I think you need a mirror too. Like, do you help your clients put together a profile that really best represents them? Because you can have some really shitty profiles or what you think about yourself may not be the actual reality 
I love my sister, but you know, she happens to be a little bit overweight and kind of sedentary. And, you know, she goes after guys and she's like, I want someone really fit that's into working out. And I'm like, yeah, that, mm, I don't know. That doesn't really work. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so true. I think that we see ourselves a little differently than others do. And again, like as a human, we want that connection and support. And that's where I come in because I get very objective criticism and kindness because first we ascertain what's your goal. You know, when I meet with a client, I'm like, what's your goal? What's that in the, you know, near future that you're looking at. And then I help them like bowling bumpers, you know, to keep on their track. And we just figure out, well, how do we best represent you so that someone can look at your profile and be like, I know who she is and I know what they're about and I know what their interests are. And it's true. Like the photos, I love a good selfie. I say a like random selfie in the park is 10 times better than like the wedding of your cousin that you attended three years ago where you're with your husband. husband. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. It's so true. Like we need to just take that, like layer off that filter off, you know, and just be yourself, represent yourself well. And also say like, what am I really looking for? And remember that you are 50% of the partnership, right? Like someone is also assessing you. (laughs) So to say like, I want someone with a six pack when you don't necessarily have that lifestyle that might like not align, you know, and you have to just be vulnerable, be real and ask yourself the hard questions. I think it's important too to remember that, um, and I'm speaking just to women, but that men are really scared of dating too, and that they're super yeah. afraid of being vulnerable and judged and they're insecure. And I know women, we kind of walk around being like, oh, like the men has the men have upper hand in dating. And they're feeling, if you're feeling that way, they're feeling that way. You know, they're yeah. feeling intimidated and nervous and, you know, excited and all of these things. And it's it, I think it's important to recognize that you know, we're all human. And if you're feeling something, you know, I imagine someone else in that situation is feeling the exact same thing. Yeah. And I think that for men, even more so because they're not encouraged to be emotional beings, they are not encouraged to be honest, you know? And so it's so scary. And I think a lot of women are like, I will never message first. And that's why Bumble is so successful because the men love to see the mutual effort, right? Like if you message some guy first and it doesn't take that much effort, they love it. They love feeling wanted and observed and, you know, they want to be pursued as well. And I guarantee if you give a little bit, they will come back to bold, right? Like they will see your interest and be like, okay, so she does like me. So now I can show her. I like her. But if you just sit there waiting, he might never know if I, you know, go for it. Is she just going to ignore me? And then the guy will feel totally sad and empty, you know? So I, I really think it's so important to meet someone halfway and put in a little bit of effort to show them that you like them. I love it. So how do you cut through the bullshit? So I know, you know, we're saying you're, there's a lot of really sincere people on there. You know, what are the red flags for anyone listening of like, yeah, not, not that he's a player. He's not into commitment. You know, what are some red flags that you, you might've seen or you can flag? Yeah. In this current moment, it's someone who is not willing to communicate. If you come across any person on a dating app, I know this is catered to women, but I always just kind of keep it general. But if you come across anybody on a dating app, who's just like, Hey, Tiffany, let's meet for a drink tomorrow. Major red flag. First of all, I know nothing about you. I know like next to nothing from your photo. Like if someone is so quick to jump, that is so not okay right now. So one of the things you can use to discern is just if they are not willing to communicate and chat and banter and have a little fun, flirty vibe going first, Heck no. I also really encourage people to get over the fear of a virtual date. Oh, yeah. Let's so talk virtual tools. dates. Yeah, That's we have new. so many tools at our disposal that can be used to really, you know, see where you're at, get comfortable. Like there's a whole thing with like voice chemistry with someone and banter and energy. And sometimes it is not matched, right? Like you have an introvert who can be a bit slower. He's not someone who is quick witted. And then you can have an extroverted woman who's just like really quick. She loves banter. She's like 
at a 10 all the time. And if you guys meet at a bar, like it's going to just be a miss. But if, Hey, you like decide let's FaceTime for 30 minutes tonight before we cook dinner or like before we do whatever for the rest of the evening, you can figure that out, right? Like you can figure it out and then you can say, gosh, I'm so happy. I didn't waste my time or waste an outfit or waste an energy thinking any more about this person. So I really say the first step is like, if they are not willing to chat a little bit with you, that's a no-go. Second, I would really recommend asking to talk on the phone or talk on FaceTime. It's so normal now and just push for it. And if you find someone, a guy who's like, oh, I don't, I don't do that. He probably doesn't look like his picture. (laughs) That's the mundo. Yes. He does not look like his picture. Or also it's like that saying too, if he wants to, he will. If he wants to, he will. If he likes you enough and he wants to get to that date in person, he will FaceTime with you. For sure. And putting in the effort, I think, you know, we as women can often be like pursuers or we want a guy to like us and we're not listening to all of the red flags or or believing them like, oh yeah, well, he never called me back, but then, you know, we met up or whatever. Yeah. I think that that's important. And I love the idea of a FaceTime date. I love that that's becoming normal. I mean, there's so many irritating things that came out with zoom and all of that, but that is a really great way to see someone's face. I mean, even their teeth, their smile, their intonation of their voice. I mean, you can learn so much about a person yes. in just that conversation. What their home looks like. Like I just had, a- yeah. If they're a big slob and there's like yeah. dirty socks and pizza boxes everywhere. Bro, the weird. Not, yeah. Yeah. You know, we don't need to clean up after him. Yeah. My client was like, Oh my God, he got on the FaceTime and he was shirtless. He was not wearing a shirt and he was so casual. And she was like, this is so weird. Was it a good, not wearing a shirt? Like he like, no. It was okay. a bad. She felt very put off. She's reserved. You know, she's definitely yeah. a little bit more timid, which is fine, you know, but she was like, when he picked up the phone and he was just like hanging in bed without a shirt on her, you know, she was like, I felt so uncomfortable and exposed, even though we were like FaceTiming. So it's really Yeah. Imagine having to be in a room with that guy. Like if you would have taken the time to have dinner or whatever, and you would have spent all those hours. Yeah. Yeah. So I just cut cut the bullshit. (laughs) It's, it's hard to ask for what you want, but we need to do what feels right for us. And I think when you can just go for that, that's when you're living in alignment. That's when you feel good and you're not wasting time. Like the slow down that you took the pause really comes into effect because you're living in your truth. So beautiful. And it's raising the vibration of the earth. I mean, I think we all as humans are kind of taking it to that next level and getting more in touch with our feelings and our emotions. And, you know, it it took a global pandemic to get everybody to just slow the fuck down. But I mean, so many beautiful things have come out of it. And and this is one of them. I really, but on, on the, on the funny side, what is the most tragic dating funny, I guess, experience that you've encountered either with yourself or with a client? So many, so many. And that's <laughs> I'm sure, thing. you know, dating is one of those things that is so much is out of your control. And a lot of what I teach is things that I've learned. And so just like this FaceTime. So I have so many examples, like there's two that come to mind of just, I thought he was a good person at my level, energy level. And then meeting in person was so weird. And, you know, there was a guy who he's probably great for someone else, not for me, but his voice was so high pitched and it was very feminine. And, you know, we had a great conversation prior to meeting all of that stuff, but he showed up in a very casual outfit and we were going to like a cool bar and he was just in like kind of an athleisure suit. And I was like, that's weird. But then second, he was like, hi, Perry. And his voice was so high pitched that I just, in that one second, I was like, no, it's just such a no for me. Like, and that's why I encourage people to like, suss it out, get on the phone. Like if you feel uncomfortable, like asking for what you want, you'll never get what you want. So just, so what did you do? Did you get out? Did you have a friend call you and feign like some illness? Like I, what do you do when you're in that situation yeah. and you're with like Michael Jackson's voice and it's like, yeah. oh my God, that's, so exactly. you know, terrible. Um, I just sabotaged the whole date. I just <laughs> went for it. I told him every like story All that you're supposed to share. I told him really like, you know, just 
That you went how, how to lose a guy in 10 days on that yeah. evening. You went through yeah. all 10. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, it was just so bad. But then alternatively, another facet to that date was, so we went to a bar that offered mocktails and cocktails and the name of each of them were very like illusions. And like, I had no idea what he ordered. So then we ordered two rounds of drinks, third drink, the waiter comes over and he goes another, uh, you know, did it a mocktail for you? And I'm like, are you not drinking? Oh no, I'm a sober living person. I've been in recovery for six years. I was like, you're an alcoholic. Like I just was so, and I'm like two drinks deep. I'm tipsy. Like he's totally sober. That was another class where I was like, Oh heck no. Yeah. And I just, you know, kind of said, all right, uh, no more drinks. Like we're good. And I was pissed. And I told him, I was like, that's really sly. Like the fact that you are not drinking and you're not even telling me or that you didn't bring it up, I think is like, so bizarre. And what was the intention of that evening? Like, let me get this girl that I just met and get her two drinks. I'm going to be sober. And then I'm going to walk her quote unquote home. No, thank you. Yeah. But I actually have another really quick story of just another woe. A better woe is me. Um, I was out with this guy And he was someone I met in person. And so we went out to a bar, vibe was off, wasn't good. And so he's like, okay, let's leave. We leave. I get into an Uber. And then I'm thinking as I get in the Uber, yeah, that bar was really fun. He was a dud, but that bar was really good. So I tell the Uber, I'm just going to get out and get out. You, you know, let's cancel the ride. He was still waiting for his Uber. I didn't see this. So he's waiting outside. He's like, hey, why are you coming back? Or did you forget something? And I was just like, oh, uh, yeah, I forgot my wallet, I think. And I just had to- I forgot my dignity. (laughs) I forgot my pride. Like I just was, it was so awkward. And I was like- But did you go to the bar? I did go to the bar. And I was like, don't worry about it. I have the car waiting. Like I told him the whole thing, but I was so caught off guard because I had thought, I didn't even think, I think that he- was still there that he was still waiting for his That's uber so oh it was so bad and i was just like well i'm living in my truth like whatever yeah, i love it i love it that's so funny yeah. all right so greatest success story greatest success story is that you know i have a client who i love her so so much she is out of a um a marriage that just didn't work or sorry no they never got married she was engaged never got to the marriage. It was very embarrassing for her. You know, like she had to tell her friends it was all off. And then when we connected almost three months ago now, she just was so out of her alignment. She was like in her being, but couldn't really get to what felt like her intuition. And so we did a lot of uh, femininity work to focus on what intimacy feels like for her, what love feels like. She had just forgotten, uh, like from being in that engagement period where there was no love, no intimacy, no like. Yeah, you just shut it off. I yeah, mean, you really was, just vote off your emotional island so you can survive. Yeah, that's tough. Exactly. And so we did a lot of like feminine work. And once we started to work on that, she really got you know, I won't say she's like fully healed and fully comfortable, but she is now living back into her truth and her alignment and flirting and really into that sexuality. And so right now the success that she's having of just dating, you know, around, she's going on super great dates. She's having super great connections with men. And to me, that's such a success because she's back in her truth right? Like she is back to herself and exploring with what feels good for her. Yeah, and just owning her power, being back in her body as a woman and being able to own your sexuality and your feminism and your sensuality and being comfortable yeah. enough to like put it out there. I love that. I yeah. really do. Yeah. And I don't think like success is finding the partner, right? Like right. the destination isn't finding the man, right? And that's what a lot of my clients have their goal as. And I push it because I'm like, you can find the most perfect guy, but if you can't show up and do the work all the time, you're going to lose him. So we figure out a different goal, but really your goal should just be, are you living in your truth? Are you living in yourself? Are you showing up every day and feeling good about what you're doing? That should be your goal. And that should be the success that you're looking for. Yeah. More and more people need to meet up with you so that they can start living in their truth and really discovering what that is. I mean, I think that that truly, you know, as as humans, it was more people start getting back in their body and start feeling the feels that we're, we're all better off. We really are both men and women too. And I think that the pandemic has pushed us to be 
more in alignment of ourselves and we are better off. And then it does really raise the vibration of the whole world and everybody feels good. I love it. So this is a question to ask everyone is what does self-care and self-love look for you, look like for you? And, you know, what do you recommend even for your clients? Cause dating can take a lot out of you emotionally and energetically. It's so true. I think for dating, if you're on the apps and you're focused on that, you need to structure time. And if you're not someone who likes scheduling too harshly, just do calendar reminders for dating and then for self-care. And so for me, self-care honestly looks like just being in my truth, which is sometimes it's journaling and just like listening to podcasts and uplifting, you know, talks, but sometimes it's just like going for a walk, going to yoga. Like I do a lot of stuff that's on my own because I do think that the pandemic encouraged me to be on my own. I'm like, wow, it feels good just to do what I want to do. Being in New York city now with things opening up again, I love just to like go to random spots. Like I was craving pizza the other day and my self-care was going to Joe's pizza and getting two pieces of pizza and just like eating them, enjoying them the whole Enjoying time. every minute. Yeah. You know, so self-care, I think for me is just really listening to what I need. What, what is my heart telling me to do? Is it to get on, you know, my Peloton bike and go for a spin or is it just to go for a walk? Is it just to like go to the dog park with my little puppy? Like, you know, it's doing what feels good for you in that moment and not pushing that down. That's what self-care looks like for me. That's so beautiful, Perry. That's awesome. So if someone wants to work with you or check out about your dating expertise, where can they find you? So Instagram is where I'm at. It's just Perry Schneider. If you just type in P-E-R-R-I, I will pop up. That is the joy of having a quirky name. And I have a ton of videos. I love to chat about this stuff. It really is my passion. I love to help people find their love in life for themselves with their partner. And I have a ton of just little tips and tricks. And you can always send me a DM and ask me your questions. Cause I actually find it really fun to like help people brainstorm and figure out like, okay, this guy isn't responding to my text. Do I leave it? Do I re-message him? Like, what do I do? I'm your like little accountability buddy. I love it. And I'll put all the links in the show notes. So thank you so much, Perry. It's been lovely. I've learned a lot. I hope everyone else has too. And check out Perry Schneider if you want to live in your truth, right? And find love. Absolutely. Absolutely.